So in this particular uh, video, we're going to discuss about the tariff analysis. Uh, we primarily going to talk about the instruments of trade policy. Since we can actually uh, divide the, all the instruments of trade policy under two broad headings. One is called the tariff and the other is, are called the non-tariff barriers. In this particular chapter, uh, chap which is chapter eight from Paul Krugman, eighth edition, we are going to discuss about the tariff, uh, the basic tariff analysis for in this particular uh, reading. So talking about this particular chapter, the, this particular chapter talks about the, as I mentioned, it talks about various trade policy instruments. So who gets benefited and who loses from these policy instruments? What are the costs and benefits of protection? Will these benefits outweigh the cost? Or, and what should be a nation's trade policy be like? So say suppose one country decides to put in tariff. How will that tariff impact the trading partners that we're going to discuss in this particular chapter? So while we talk about the tariff analysis, let's talk about the types of tariffs that we encounter. The first tariff that type of tariff, basically we have three types of tariffs in place. One is called the lump sum tariff. The second one is called the specific tariff. And the third one is called the ad valorem tariff. Spe lump sum tariff, as the name itself suggests, uh, are like a particular amount of money have, will be transferred from the import from the importing partner to exporting partner irrespective of the price irrespective of the quantity being exchanged in this transaction whereas specific tariff on the other hand are, are tariffs which are levied as a fixed charge for per unit of goods import. So say suppose if we have 10% of our tariff or we have 10% a, a, a of price as tariff or say suppose we have 10 rupees per unit that will be charged as a tariff, then it will be an example of a specific tariff. Ad valorem tariffs, on the other hand, are the tariffs which are levied as a fraction of the value of imported goods, which means it is dependent upon the quantity, not only on the price, but on, but also on the quantity. Say, suppose one imposes a 20% ad valorem tariff. So this 20% is going to be different if we import 100 units, and this 20% value will be different if we're going to import 10 units for a, for a particular commodity. So while we talk about the tariff analysis, uh, we also need to understand that there are other uh, there are other uh, uh, there are other instruments of trade policy which are non-tariff. For example, voluntary export restraints. For example, maybe uh, your import quotas, maybe your local content requirements, etc. Before we begin with tariff analysis, we first need to understand that we are going to distinguish two different or two separate analysis for tariff analysis. First would be a large country case and second would be a small country case. As the name itself suggests, a large country would be the one which will have an impact on the trading partner, whereas the small country would be a one which is ineffective to bring about a change in the trading partner. So as as we already know, the tariffs are similar to taxes. So how taxes respond or behave in the internal market or domestic market, it is similarly how tariffs behave or respond in the external market. So like one can pass on burden of a tax to a consumer or a producer. So irrespective of the party on whom tax is placed in the internal economy, the burden of the tax is always shared between the consumer and producer. Similarly, when we are talking about application of tariff in the large country case, then in that case, we uh, uh, the importing partner is able to pass on some burden of its tariff to the exporting partner. So the amount of tariff or the amount of government revenue that is collected by the importing country's government is partially paid by the importers and partially paid by the exporters. This is the case of large country. Whereas a small country is the one which is ineffective to pass on this burden to the trading partner. So let's begin with our basic tariff analysis. So if we, if we wish to figure out the basic tariff analysis, we first need to understand the markets wherein there will be application of tariff. 
so there will be an importer of a commodity which we can call as a consumer there will be an exporter of a commodity which we can call as a producer so let's suppose we are talking about the home economy now in the home economy we have a downward sloping demand curve and upward sloping supply curve of some commodity say suppose x it has a market equilibrium which reveals the equilibrium price as pa so if the world price is pa then the import demand of this particular commodity from from home economy will be zero why because it is a price at which the internal market clears itself so it does not need to import the commodities because the because the internal market does not need to import the commodity at this particular price can i say that the import demand curve starts from this particular price pa which is depicted as point a on the import demand curve which is the right side panel of the diagram being shared on the screen as the price decreases from pa to p2 domestic consumers would want to consume o d2 quantity of a commodity when as the producers would just want to o s2 quantity of a commodity as a result of which there is an excess demand of d2 s2 which is reflected as o d2 s2 at point 2 in the right hand side panel diagram at price p2 so this is the import demand or this is the demand of a commodity that the consuming country or the importing country would want to have at price p2 say the price we can decide, we can check another price combination p1 at price p1 domestic consumers want to consume o d1 quantity of a commodity whereas the producer just want to supply o s1 amount of a commodity as a result of which there is an excess demand of d1 s1 at price p1 for this particular commodity in this country so at this price p1 which is reflected as point 1 on the import demand curve on the right hand side panel diagram o d1 s1 amount of uh, import demand is reflected so as the price goes on decreasing in the world market the import demand from home economy will be increasing or as the price increases in the world market the import demand from the home economy will actually be fall right so this is our import demand curve moving on to the supply side of the story let's suppose it is the foreign economy which wishes to supply the commodity so we need to understand the equilibrium situation in the foreign market as well so we again have a d star as a downward sloping demand curve in foreign s star as an upward sloping supply curve in foreign p a star as a equilibrium price like we had no import demand at price pa which was the internal equilibrium situation in the home economy we will have no export supply at price pa star from the foreign economy because at this price pa star the equilibrium or the market for this commodity x in in the foreign economy clears itself so there is zero supply of this particular commodity at price pa star whereas we will see for different combinations as the price increases the export supply of the commodity will also be increasing for instance let's talk about price p1 at this price p1 foreign economy would want to supply o s1 star amount of a commodity whereas foreign consumers would just want to consume o d1 star so there is an excess supply now this excess supply can actually be supplied to the world market as export supply at price p1 similarly at price p2 there is an excess supply in the foreign economy of magnitude s2 star d2 star given as the export given or depicted on the right hand side diagram of the export supply curve so what we are trying to say is that with increasing prices export supply increases and with increasing prices import demand decreases this is our normal market situation that we observe uh, 
wherein we have a downward sloping demand curve and an upward sloping supply curve meeting each other at equilibrium one. So this is the diagram figure three shown on the screen, which explains the world market equilibrium, wherein we have an export supply curve coming from the foreign economy. We have an import demand curve coming from the domestic economy, meeting each other at equilibrium one, delivering the equilibrium price as PW and QW for the world economy.